Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Thank you so much for stopping in. And and a big thank you to everybody who listens to the show for returning listeners. Thank you for so much for coming back in and listening to another episode. And if it's your first time finding the podcast, thank you for stopping in. Hopefully you enjoyed the conversation and come back for more conversations on food, wine, and whiskey. My guest today, I have a great guest today. He uh, does what I enjoy doing, which is a backyard chef. Uh, loves cooking outdoors. Mr. Matthew Hussey is my guest today. Matthew, how you doing? Hey, Rob, I'm doing well. I hope you are. I'm doing really well. Hey, I, I'm, I'm excited about our conversation today. I've been watching you for a while and you've been gracious enough, nice enough to uh, engage with me with some conversation and ultimately a, a phone call. And, and uh, you know, I wanted to have you on the podcast because you you do backyard cooking videos specifically on the flat top is kind of where you live right now. Uh, Your YouTube channel is the hungry hussy and man, I got to tell you, I'm impressed. You got 238,000 subs last time I checked. And uh, you know, this is a a type of cooking that I think over the last decade has just taken off. I mean, it's just become a a huge kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a method or what you want to call it, but a a huge liking for cooking this way. And, And you do a great job. Tell us about your channel how you started it, why you started it. Cause I'm assuming you were a backyard cook, you know, like all us dudes, we like to cook in the backyard and you cooked on the flat top. And all of a sudden you said, Hey, I'm going to start filming myself cooking these videos. How'd that come about? Right. right. Yeah. So, um, man, it's, it's crazy how, when you start laying it out, just how things just kind of evolved, you know? And, uh, so back uh just got a memory about it not too long ago when i got my first uh big green egg lusted after a big green egg for a long time right uh got one and uh this was about 13 probably about 13 years ago and you know i cooked on that thing religiously all the time now i had a lot more time on my hands at that point didn't have any kids um joined the, the big green egg forum uh, this online got to know a lot of really good people. And I mean, we were, I was cooking, I mean, I was probably cooking on that thing three to three to five times a, a week. Right. Um, and, and my, my, I had a background in photography. I love photography, love, uh, everything about it. Uh, not so much video at that time. And, you know, I got to posting on Twitter, got to post it on Instagram, got to post it on Facebook these pictures that I was taking of my food that I was cooking you know, in the house on the bigger, mostly on the big green egg, but it's is in the house too. I, I like cooking. I like cooking in general, cooking outside, of course, makes it better. Um, and you know, out of the blue, you know, some marketing agency, you know, got a hold of me and said, Hey, we'd love to, uh, there, they were a marketing, they were a marketing agency that worked with Blackstone griddles and, and uh, they say, hey, we'd love for you to be an affiliate with us um, if you're interested. You know, here's a here's an affiliate link. You know, if we buy something, uh, somebody buys something from that, you know, you get a little cut. And I'm like, oh, man, that sounds pretty cool. So um, I was like, yeah, sign me up. And and at, there at the end of, you know, what we were doing, what we were setting up, they they said um, there was only like, like just a couple people out there doing griddle videos uh, or blackstone videos uh, on youtube at the time one of which was todd tovin uh and so he was kind of like the original you know griddle guy on uh or blackstone guy on on youtube they were like check out check out this guy his name's todd tovin he, he does a lot of stuff on youtube and um you know consider making some videos and uh, they didn't say you need to but so i got to looking and I was like, gosh, this, I could do this. I could do this. And, uh, I have this equipment, you know, and got into it and, uh, golly, uh, let me go one step back. I thought that I wanted to be a blogger, Rob. That was terrible, terrible advice that I gave myself. Okay. Come to find out. I didn't really care much about writing or typing or, you know, I can do it. I do well whenever I put my mind to it and I got the time, but I much rather just sit here and talk about it and tell you my process of how I did this, how I did that. And, um, I think, I think my blog is still out there, but I changed the name. It was like the chef next door 
like how stupid was that you know <laughs> <laughs> like so so rant so run of the mill it's like all oh, the shit everybody there's there's twenty thousands of those you know and uh i remember i remember uh my wife and i we were just sitting there just kind of him hawing around and and i was like i've got the name for my for my blog um and i call it the hungry hussy and i'm you know a lot of people um uh you know they they, they hussy seems like a a, a weird name or um uh, you know but it's it's kind of popular uh especially uh europe in europe you know uk but uh i was like the hungry hussy it's kind of a play on words you know hussy kind of like a, a something to be like well, you know when somebody's seeing that they're like hussy that sounds kind of interesting the hungry hussy uh so i get get a lot of uh a lot of eyebrows up on that and so um once g- going back that's whenever you know the name was born at that time uh still not so much video yet and got to dabbling in video and um let me take another step back on the big green egg forum these guys were were cooking on these griddles and once i saw this guy make he was making grilled cheese he had like he had like 10 or 12 of the suckers on that blackstone you know and guy was just he was just cooking up everything on this griddle and i was like dang i have got to get one of these things uh cheese steaks hamburgers he's like oh man these smash burgers you gotta have these smash burgers and i was like yeah i do so so at you this know, point I, you, I, did, you didn't have a griddle at this point i didn't i didn't this was okay. uh i got my griddle in 2015 um august uh end of august of 2015 and uh it's coming up on almost as 10 years be uh uh just coming up year and so yeah at that time i only had a uh, big green egg and uh, i had i'd bought like this cast iron griddle thing to go on it for some stuff but at that point no i hadn't so i had a blog um i had a blog finally had my name you know i'm posting pictures um you know this guy on the big green egg forum said hey i like these black stones next thing you know that's whenever the marketing agency reached out to me and that's whenever that's how it all became uh kind of real at that point and yeah the hunger hussy cooking on blackstone started happening and now, when, uh, when did you launch the youtube channel when did that finally uh that was the following year in 2016 is whenever okay. i think uh around june june 2016 is whenever i uh launched the the hunger hussy youtube channel um it looks a little bit I, I mean i just used basically my old login so it looks like i've been on youtube longer but uh officially cooking on on the griddle and that stuff was about june 2016 and uh yeah um it's been it's been a ride ever since i'll tell you that a lot of work well i, I love your channel because one uh you know you, you learn a lot about cooking on on a griddle in the black yeah. zone. we're going to get into some of those things what i mean by that in just a few minutes but two you know to me matt anytime you watch a youtube channel whether it be about cooking or you know uh, fixing a, a, a plumbing issue in your house. Uh, you know, it's nice to, to gather information and learn while you watch, but it's also a whole lot of fun to be entertained <laughs> while you're watching. And, you know, watching your channel, watching you cook, I mean, you get engaged or you, you at least get the viewers engaged with you uh, to have a good time while we're watching you cook us some some fun dishes on, on the grill. Well, I appreciate that, and I try try my best because sometimes it's it's tough, as you know. You're you're a cook too, and uh, you know sometimes you just get wrapped up in the moment. And God, I tell you, the stuff goes so fast on that. You know, whenever you know things cook so fast, and you got to be on your game, and then you got to try to insert some kind of you know some kind of stupid comment or do something, <laughs> you know, to try to you know insert some comedy in the thing and uh and yeah so you know sometimes you do good and sometimes you 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 know it's just like with anything you own it sometimes sometimes you're not but uh well yeah i'll say it this way too i like that you keep it real you're authentic because you know if you make a little hiccup here or there uh you know you just roll with it you you leave it in there you're not trying to edit it out and go you know i'm i'm the perfect cook every time you keep it real we all can watch you and go hey man i'm gonna have a hiccup too hussy has a hiccup i'm gonna have yeah yeah and that's that's part i you know i try to resonate with uh with with just a you know the standard guy you know and that's all i am i ain't ain't nothing ain't nothing special and uh 
you know, I want to try to resonate with that, that guy who's, uh, you know, he's just trying to cook for his family, cook for his friends, you know, maybe flex a little bit, but, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you just, you know, you're just trying to trying to do the best you can. Yeah, absolutely. And I do want to mention, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, the, the marketing agency that reached out to you and kind of nudged you along to start kind of doing a little more and ultimately getting to YouTube. But uh, you are now, do we call it a partner with uh, Blackstone? I mean, you're on their channel as well, where you're, yeah. you're putting out some videos on cooking on their, their griddles. Yeah, I think. I think, uh, I think they call it a consultant okay. um, kind of. So yeah, I, uh, I'm a contract or whatever for, with them to, uh, uh, I make a video per week for them and my, my right now, um, as I speak, my, my show airs on their channel on Saturdays, um, time, time kind of, yeah, it just depends, but that right now it's on Saturdays. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, you ready to dive yeah. into some some uh, some talk on the flat tops specifically, and uh, sure we'll too. talk cooking, we'll talk maintenance, we'll talk equipment. Kind of let people know if, if they don't have a flat top, but they've seen your videos yeah. or others, and they're interested in getting one. I think a lot of people can be intimidated by this for a couple of reasons. One, it's the first question I'll have for you is the seasoning part. I've had friends who said they bought one, and four months later they they threw it away because it just got all rusty. And uh, they just couldn't maintain and keep it up to be able to cook on it. Now I'm here in Houston, you know, we, we were close to the ocean, to the Gulf, and I know you are on the East coast as well. And you got humidity and things like that, but seizing a, a griddle properly, once you, you do it the right way, I think, you know, it, it's pretty durable. It holds up in, in most environments. I agree. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they do have problems with it and, you know, you're trying to take time at the beginning to really, you know, make sure you get a good, good season, get it nice and season, um, is, is very important. Um, and you know, my seasoning process, you know, everybody, it's just like with every, you know, it's like we were talking about podcasts. Everybody kind of has their own little way of doing things. And I like, you know, I, I go very light, you know, seasoning coats. I like things to cool down before coat in between coats. But yeah, as long as you season it well to begin with, I got videos out there doing it. Um, season it well. If you clean it right after you use it and then oil it right after you use it to store it away, you know, I, I don't think you're going to have many problems. I mean, we, it gets hot here. It gets humid. It, Lord knows it's humid. It's like an armpit, you know? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, you, it, it'll, you know, it'll, it, 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 it'll definitely last you a long time. Now, um, I'm not saying that, uh, you won't have up under it rust, you know, that kind of thing. I don't really worry about too much about that. Some people, some people do. I just feel like all that heat and stuff, you're just, it's just going to mess with the paint and that kind of stuff. So, but the top, you know, clean it real well, oil it real well afterwards, you know, to make sure it's dry because man, once, once rust starts, rust, rust does not sleep. That's for sure. I'll tell you one of the one of the tips I learned from from watching your your videos and and I've been cooking on a flat top for a decade. I love the things, uh, but I never did this until recently. I'd say about a year ago when I saw you talking about this is having that water bottle when you talk about cleaning the top of the uh, the griddle and just yeah. getting that water on there that just helps release everything. It really makes a huge difference and so quick to clean yeah. the top of that griddle. Yeah, it's it the water. I mean, you know, there's no. Some people want to say, you know, put some chemical on it, you know, but that they're using principles from coming from a flat top, like a like a stainless flat top, you know, like at a teppanyaki place, which is way different. Um, yeah, water, water is all you need. That steam, that that boiling steam, you know, coming off, it just brings everything right off. Um, sometimes you might have something that's a little, you know, kind of caked on, but. You know, if it's nice, if it's a sugary thing, just leave it on and it'll start crusting up on you and you can pretty much scrape it right off, take your water and, you know, depending on what it is, you might have to, you know, invest in some paper towels. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and, um, and a nice scraper that you like, um, I, I just use, it looks like a bench scraper. Uh, some people like different things, but, um, you know, that water and a paper towel. And then, um, I've been digging this other stuff for like, after a after I, you know, water it, after I 
you know, rub it down really good, make sure all the junk's off of it. Um, get it dry, you know, make sure there's no other water and moisture on the top. And then this spray, it's like a, it's like a avocado olive oil spray. I've been using it a lot in my videos and just mist it over the top. And then I put the cover on it and it's, it's good for the next day. Sweet. Okay. Uh, another question folks are going to be, you know, asking is they think you just need a spatula to cook or maybe two, but I'm, I'm guessing you would have some suggestions on other tools or equipment that when you get into flat top cooking, maybe you don't get them all at once. You're not going to go out and yeah. buy all these things, but you know, as you build your, your tools that you want to have your equipment, you want to have for a flat top cooking, what are yeah. four or five that you would say, you know, at some point, these are, call them essential that you really yeah. want to have in the arsenal. What would they be? You know, uh, spatulas and, and spatula is not, uh, you know, there's, there's different kinds of spatulas and, um, it's like with anything, you kind of want to get what you like. Um, I like a nice, uh, flimsy, I, I like a more flimsy er spatula. That's got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of flex to it. I don't like a real rigid spatula. So spatulas, tongs, you know, that's one thing and get you a nice, you know, scraper to scrape with. Um, I, this is, I, I feel like everybody needs a really nice instant read thermometer. Um, that way you're not overcooking your chicken. It's not, it don't taste like sawdust. You know, you can nail that temperature. You know, a lot of people's like, oh, you don't need no thermometer. You just use your hand, you know, do the web thing. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can for a little bit, but you know, if, if you got a nice instant read thermometer, um, you know, you'll, you'll nail that temperature, you know, you know, right on, right on the money. And then that way you're, you're safe. Also, you, you know, you don't want to make anyone sick, but then you also don't want to overcook your proteins either. And, uh, you know, it tastes, tastes like junk, but, um, you know, instant read thermometer and a nice dome, a uh, nice dome works really well. It contains the food. If you're steaming some vegetables, you could close the hood if you want, uh, having a, having a, having a, um, a cover, a nice cover, steam cover helps create the convection and keeps it tighter. It's kind of like, you know, people say, well, how's an air fryer cook things faster than an oven? It's like, well, uh, basically an air fryer is a small convection oven and it's just at a, in a tighter space and it, and it, and it rotates a lot faster. So that's why it gets done faster. Um, so the principle, they just call it, you know, air fryer, because yeah, it sounds awesome, you know, but, uh, same principle there. You, you, it cooks a little bit faster. You can, you, know, you can steam your vegetables, potatoes, you know, it makes things cook a lot faster. Um, uh, you know, for smash burgers, you know, get a nice smasher that's comfortable for, for the person. Um, the Blackstone version I like actually the flat, it's a flat version. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, spatulas, tongs, I put those in the same categories. Ones that's comfortable for you. Um, instant read thermometer, an IR thermometer. If you're not, the, the one I use has an IR infrared that can measure temperature. Well, really I want I want to talk about that for a second because I yeah. I've not seen that before yeah. until I and I don't know that I've seen anybody else use one like that and yeah. I, I need to look for that. I'm I'm assuming you have a link for that in your description on your videos. I haven't looked yet. But do you? I do. I okay. do. Yes. Yeah. So that's a that's a ThermaWorks. Um, you know, you'll see Thermo pins everywhere on the barbecue circuits. You know, America's Test Kitchen. They always rate ThermaWorks thermo pins you know the best uh instant read thermometer on the market and and they are um and they make a, a thermo pin ir and that just adds uh instant read and infrared all in one item so that way you don't have to have two devices you know you see some people to have a gun and then they'll have an instant read and this right here just combines the two yeah. which i think is brilliant uh, because to your point, it, it eliminates, you know, a tool that you have to have out at your, your cooking yep. station, so to speak. Yep. So I love that. But it, but it also leads me to the other thing that I think is very important. And a lot of people getting into griddle cooking don't don't pay attention to or, or maybe just aren't aware that they need to be mindful of this. And that's talking about the infrared, the cooking zones and the different different temperatures you're going to use so that yeah. you can better manage what you're cooking as far as when it's on a high heat versus when it's on a medium or even, you know, a burner that's off just to kind of keep it warm. Yep. Yeah. That's using your zones to, uh, 
to your to your advantage is huge and you know depending on your griddle uh really dictates of of how you use those zones you know there's 17 inch griddles there's 22 inch griddles there's 28s there's 36s and I always tell folks especially getting into the griddle game I, a lot of people ask I see what what do you recommend uh you know what's the best griddle and you know I always tell folks uh, get what you can afford uh both uh price wise and space wise depending on you know how much space space meaning like your deck or wherever you're going to put it right um, and then of course, budget wise. Uh, so, but, uh, I always recommend 36 if you can afford it both ways, space and budget. And that way, now, I don't care if you got two people, if it's you and your wife, you and your husband, whatever, uh, always recommend a 36. The, uh, you never see people say, man, I wish I had a you know, downsize. It's usually, you know, the other way around. Somebody wishes they would have gotten a bigger one. Um, and, and there's just so much flexibility, you know, like you said, you could have one, one zone off to zone zones dictated by you. Right. Um, you can have it on idle. You can cycle the burners. I t I'm a very, very, I talk about this all the time, cycling your burners. Um, a lot of people say, well, my low hussy, this thing gets up to 400 degrees and that's probably right. You know, you got three burn, four burners could be three depending on whatever you got if you leave that on for a certain amount of time there's no wind blowing or anything like that sure it could get up there um so cycling your burners well cycling your burners is cut cut some burners off you know bring that temperature down uh also very very i'm a big proponent of using water yet again to bring those temperatures down water will water will change the temperature so much because all that heat is absorbed by the water right um so when you're cooking eggs hussy they are saying hussy man my eggs they're black i was like it's because you smoke that oil man or if it's butter you know butter has a very smoke very low smoke point uh 350 degrees after 350 degrees it'll start turning brown and start turning black uh if you really really get high so using that ir especially if you're not very good at seeing what you see um, and adjusting for it, right? So take you a little bit of water, put your water down where you're gonna put your eggs, wipe it clean, and you and then and then see what your temperatures are, then you'll be ready to go. So um cycling your burners, using your zones, um, you know, use a little bit of water if you need to to bring temperatures down. So yeah, I think that tip with the water is a, a great tip because you're right, it, it cools that area down pretty quick. But that all that water also probably goes away pretty quick, or you can get it off the griddle pretty quick. So it's not a like it you're, you're waiting for the burner to cool down. Right. Yeah. You. I mean, you're already if you're at 400 degrees, right? You need it to around 325 for some, you know, some nice eggs. Yeah. You put the water on it, it starts dancing. I mean, it's you know, it's hit, it's hard, you know, and and yeah, you just you you put your water on there, take you some paper towels, hit it with your scraper. And what's cool is whatever oil that you burnt, you know, you 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 take it off, right? With the sure. with the with your paper towel or with your terry cloth or whatever. So very big. I'm I'm really trying to show that on some on some on my videos, especially like an egg video. Um, just knowing your temperatures, knowing your oils, what you use. Uh, when you could, when, you know, if they're smoked or whatever, you know, once you smoke them, it's not good. Um, just trying to get this learning process down. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, for those who watch your show, uh, they, they would want, they'd be mad at me if I didn't ask this question. <laughs> how's the, uh, how's the feud with the Andersons? Are they still a little nuisance on the side over there? I mean, they, they, a lot of interruptions by them, you know, not very yeah. considerate of what you have going on. How's that, how's that going with them as neighbors? You know, those, those guys, they, uh, they're never happy. You know, they're <laughs> always, you know, they're, they want to mow their yard when, when the, when the on air goes on, you know, they see the lights come on over here. They, they want to start mowing. They want to start, uh, getting their chainsaws, you know, that kind of thing. So, and, uh, you know, you, you, and they, they want to keep you on your toes all, all the time. So, yeah. They're, they're a bunch of, they're a bunch of hacks, you know, <laughs> and the other question I got, I got to ask Hussey is, uh, will we ever see Jacob in front of the camera? 
man, I don't, that's a good question. Uh, you know, it's, that's a, it's a fun thing to, to do. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, you know, I always say, you know, folks, um, uh, you know, his lawyers have advised us to not have his, his uh, face on there <laughs> have fun with it. Uh, but, uh, I, I think it gives a, almost like a tool time, uh, you know, kind of effect, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Wilson. Yeah. yeah like Mr. Wilson. Yeah. You never, never officially saw his face. And, uh, I told Do you, you get a lot of, uh, a lot of viewers kind of in comments asking about seeing him. I, we do. We do. Yeah. That's that. It was pretty cool. Uh, this one guy, he was like, why don't we, why don't you see his face? Why, why aren't you showing? I was like, eh, hey, lawyers advise us not to. And it's like, you know, he's kind of, you know, we kind of advised it a big deal. He's like, man, you might want to find a different camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, you got between the Andersons and uh, Andersons and Jacob, you know, it's uh, and uh, you know, it's 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 kind of a fun time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I I love your comments on the Andersons all the time because there's always again it gets back to me. You just being authentic. You're not trying to cut that out or anything. You just you roll with it, and I think that's great. Yeah. You know, it makes you makes you yes, uh, yeah. makes it a lot of fun to watch you. Fridays, Fridays, it seems like everybody wants to dang do something around here. You know, I live in a neighborhood. There's a lot of uh, you know, mowing crews and that kind of thing. It's, so we've, we've been, we just roll with it. I get tired of, I used to, I used to get kind of, you know, I'm like, oh man, now I'm just like, yeah, let's just roll with it. Sometimes I'll go out there and feed them. I'm like, hey, you want something? Depending on what I'm go. doing at the time. Yeah. Well, that, that'll get them to turn the mower off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see these one guys. They always hawking at me. There. I, I keep looking out there because that's where they. That's where I'm at. I'm right here at my set and pretty much. And and I see them. They they looking over there. They're over there cutting the Anderson's yard. You know. I'm yeah, waiting to, uh, on video here. One of them yell. You know what you cooking? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, my one neighbor John. He's been on a time or two, and uh, uh, a lot of times he'll leave or whatever. He'll honk the horn and be like, "There goes John." <laughs> <laughs> that's just funny. Uh, but that's, I mean, right, that's, that, that's what I try, you know, it's, it's, it's a neighborhood thing, you know, so I try to resonate with just that guy. I mean, if some, some old boy is just cooking on his back deck, you know, Hey, yeah, you know, I yeah. am neighborly, you know, so. And, and you, you cook with other methods, right? I mean, obviously you mentioned the big green egg and now you have the griddle, but I'm, I'm assuming you're a, a barbecue guy. You like it low and slow and, and maybe you yeah. have a, just a regular gas grill or something like that, a charcoal grill or something like that. So yeah, I got, uh, I got, if my wife was, if you were talking with my wife, she would probably tell you I have way too much stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I got, got one of those too, uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah. They're just, they're never happy. Are they? They're, they're, they're like the Andersons, you know, they're never happy uh, till we, uh, bring something off one of those, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. She, she don't have to worry about cooking. Happy. That's the thing. Yeah. She, it's like, well, you don't have to worry about cooking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I love barbecue too. I do. I do a lot of barbecue. I'd say a lot. I don't do a whole lot, but, uh, yeah, I got, uh, don't have a, don't have a, ch uh, charcoal. Well, I guess you, a big green eggs, charcoal grill, I guess I got two of those, um, got an offset grill or offset smoker, uh, Lone Star grills, uh, down near, down near you in Texas. Um, uh, I got a little Kamado Joe junior <clears throat> for like a travel a little thing. And then, uh, pellet grill uh from from blackstone and i think that's about it and i got well, a 22, I, 22 inch can i tell you what i call the uh the uh pellet grill that, that type of cooking uh fake fake a uh, fake baker or something what is it no I, I i don't mind it i've never had one and my wife has encouraged me believe it or not all the cooking things i have out back that's something she's encouraged me to get because you know barbecuing here in, in houston in the summer uh, you know, I only have to put wood in unless I just need smoke because it gets hot enough. Yeah. Um, know, right. But no, I call it the uh, the backyard crock pot. You just put oh, it in and forget yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> I, I'm a, I, I use it all the time uh, because I just, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to have to feed splits of wood and, you know, that kind of thing. So or I just don't want to fire up a big green egg. It's, it's, it's really good just to go over there and just turn the thing on. You can get a little bit of smoke flavor from it, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely, it, it's a, it's an easy bake for sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and you know, I'm, I, I, hey, look, I, even in the kitchen, I like a crock pot. There, there's a place for all these different pieces of a cooking equipment. So I agree. Opposed I agree. To it, uh, so um, I got to ask you, you know, for me, I, I, I laugh at a few videos that I, I've seen. And I don't think I've seen one on your channel about this. Uh, what's the cooking season like for you where you're at? Because I laugh at a lot of videos that I'm seeing now where they're like, getting close to, you know, not being able to cook out back. It's uh, going to turn to winter and, you know, got to put stuff away until the spring. And I'm in Houston. You know, we just last week got below 90. My backyard cooking season is about to take off. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're getting – this is prime weather right now for us, which is uh, fall, right? And so right now it's not as hot as Houston here. It's where uh, – let's see, it's October 22nd. So we're, we're seventies here, uh, right now. And that's, that's about average, but yeah, this is prime time right now. It makes you feel good. makes you want to get out and, and do something. Uh, th there's no season here. It's all the time. Okay. Uh, so it gets you cold. cook all winter. Yeah. 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 I don't, it, it gets, it gets kind of cold here. Uh, wind, you know, but, uh, no, nah, we, uh, we, we cook all the time. I mean, every, every Friday we shoot for, for videos and, uh, it's rain, sleet, shine. It don't matter. Hurricane, we had a little tropical storm roll by. We were still, we were rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little storm roll by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, let's get back to, to the, the flat top and let's talk about cooking on the flat top. I remember when I first got mine, my wife's comment was all you can cook on that thing is breakfast. That's all. And, and don't get me wrong breakfast is probably my favorite thing to cook on the flat top. I'm a big breakfast guy, but yeah. the creativity that you can do and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the most creative person, but watching you and others like you come up with some awesome ideas to do things on the flat top. I'm always impressed. Uh, one of your recent ones I saw was the, uh, the flatbread Cuban, or I don't want to call it a sandwich, a Cuban pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was flatbread. It was awesome. Yeah. That was, that was a really good, and what was cool is it was number one, it was a, a flatbread pizza, uh, number one. And number two, you get to use, you know, leftover pulled pork, you know, from, uh, from a smoke, from a smoke session, you know, prior. So it was kind of like, uh, it was, it was easy, but man, it was good. I remember, uh, yeah, there's, we, Jacob and I, when we we're, when we we're filming, it's like a lot of times we just, we'll take a bite, you know, I'll take a bite. And, you know, the next thing you know, we're, we're off, we're do done and we're going to something else. Yeah. And there's sometimes we, we eat stuff and we linger <laughs> more. We're like, man, that's good. You know, and it's like, we, we can't, we got to stop eating because we got, there's like three or four more videos that we got to do. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's not just for breakfast, you know, there's, um, even desserts, you know, you can do, um, you know, I do gravy. I don't do gravy on the top. I have done it on the top before, but, um, you know, you, if it's sausage gravy, you know, you can just have a pan next net or a, or a half hotel pan, you know, things like that uh, where you can cook the protein or whatever on the flat top and then just put it over in the pan and make it. Um, yeah, it's, they're so versatile. Uh, I like, I like to personally, uh, shallow fry, use it as a little bit of a shallow fry. So I intentionally pitch my Blackstone. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Um, I like yep. it to be pitched kind of forward to me or closer to me. So that way it kind of pulls up in that, that left corner kind of over to the center. And that way, if I want to do like chicken fried steak or, you know, or a chicken sandwich, you know, fried chicken sandwich, you know, and you can kind of do that. If you're going to fry some pork chops or you know, yeah. whatever. Um, you can do that and it's, you know, you're not, it's not swimming in oil, but there's enough there to where you can shallow fry some, you know? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and just having fun, you know, we're talking about what you can cook, you know, trying to think that cooking things the right way, so to speak, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. but you can also, you know, call it, go crazy, come up with some ideas, just try stuff. And one of the things I, I think about when I say that is uh, I saw you do on your channel. I think you got it from a, another channel, but I love that you did it, was the uh, the grilled cheese hot dog. Yeah. Yeah, those were really good. Um, yeah, the, the guy, uh, Chili's and Smoke, he's kind of a, 
I don't think he's new, new, but uh, I think he's kind of new to YouTube and stuff. I think he's he's getting on up there. He's making some really good content. Um, it it got it got somebody had sent it to me like, "Hussy, you've got to do these." And and once I saw him, like, shoot, yeah. And, and plus, you know, I gotta you know want to do it with like the North Carolina hot dogs, you know, the red hot dogs. Uh, yeah, they were, they were pretty good. Pretty, pretty spectacular. And then the sky's the limit of what you want to do to them. You know, you can add jalapenos, you can add whatever, but the uh, thing of it is, is use a hot dog and a bun and, uh, and cheese and the, <laughs> everything else is whatever you want to do. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there's all kinds of dishes that you can cook on this. You know, I, I always like doing, you know, Obviously, the, the ones that most people would just think about would be burgers or smash burgers. I also think yeah. a slider night. I've done a slider night where we'll have, you know, a group of people come over and and you can get, you know, here in our H-E-B, a grocery store here in the Houston area. You can get these different kind of sliders, uh, different flavor profiles and things like that. And you throw 50 of them on there and pull them off and everybody's just kind of gobbling up bites like that. Yeah. Um, Philly cheesesteaks, things like that. Chicken fried rice. Are there a few things that you, you've you've said, OK, I'm, I'm going to try this on the flat top and, and it's become a favorite for you or for your family that you go, OK, this just rocks and it's in the rotation. We got to do this, you know, once a month or once every couple of months for sure, because it's that good. Yeah, we do. We do Greek Greek chicken uh, a lot um, and it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you know, we marinate chicken. We, you know, I like some zucchini stuff like that, and um, get some tzatziki. I'll make some some um, uh, turmeric rice. You know, in the in the house, I've made it on the blackstone too in a pan. Um, yeah, I mean Greek chicken. That's great. You know, uh, you put it in a pita with a with a salad. It's always it's so good. Uh, the kids love it. My wife loves it. Uh, tacos are always a big hit here too. Um, we do my wife, they, uh, I never knew about this until I met my wife or wasn't my wife then, but they do these taco shells. They call them shells, but they're like a, it's almost like a crepe. It's like, kind of like a crepe batter, but it's, um, it's cornstarch milk and, uh, some cornmeal and, and you make you know, your, it's like a, a, a soft tortilla, if you will, um, out of that. And those are always just really good. Kids love that as well. Um, and then, you know, your typical fare, you know, we, I, a lot of people think I cook just crazy stuff every single day. And it's, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's kind of humorous. And some people get a little, uh, get a little mean about it too, but uh, it's all good. But yeah, I mean, pork chops, you know, just standard fare stuff is this, it's always on rotation. Uh, the Greek chicken's good. Uh, the, uh, I cooked, what did I cook the other day? And they were like, gosh, what is this? Um, oh, shoot. I marinated it in, it's basically Greek yogurt, a um, little bit of, uh, you know, other flavors. I kept it kind of mild, some paprika. Um, Almost like an Indian to- type of like, butter chicken or something kind of yeah but it was um oh shoot i can't remember uh any rate they loved it it was great i can't remember what all i made a video uh it was like like chicken shawarma actually but uh anyway i left out the yeah the the warmer stuff no cayenne things like that because they they don't really handle that stuff really well um it was kind of a play on that and, and they really dug that a lot and, um, uh, but yeah, stuff like that is, uh, is, I mean, and, and you can get, the, you can get the meal, you can get it on the table way faster than anything else. You just throw it there, there you go. Yeah. And, you know, and that's the, that's just the, the great thing. And when, when kids come along the Blackstone, it's shine because I can get dinner on the table way faster than any other thing or item. Well, the other the other thing I picked up from you that I would have never thought to have done that I do now is uh, some things that you wouldn't think to put on the flat top, which are like tater tots, French fries, um, biscuits, you know, Bill, Pillsbury biscuits. And you put the dome yeah. over them and, and those things cook just fine. I would have never thought to put that type of food on there. But to your point of being able to cook it quickly and, and it comes out great, man, it really does. 
Yeah, and you and you don't have to go in the house. You know, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, just to get the ingredients and stuff, but it's like it's way better outside. You know, and if you're cooking bacon, you know, your house don't smell like bacon. You know, you you leave is it that, outside. Is that a bad thing? Well, it's not a bad thing, but then whenever you go to church and you're like, you're like gosh, I, I, I think my hair stinks like bacon, you know, and it's like everything just kind of kind of stinks on you. But uh, it's not a bad thing. I'm pretty sure that's how I pick my wife up. A little, bacon, <laughs> a little bacon here, a little bacon there. And there she's, you go. I got her. Got her. Yeah, it's cool that you can cook so many things, you know, and, and that's one of the reasons I always enjoy watching your channel. I'll tell you one of the other things that I made for the first time, I think you did a uh, – did you call it a cowboy hash? Is that what you uh, call it? Cowboy stir fry. Cowboy stir fry. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, I, I took that, and one night I was cooking some fish here uh, on the flat top, and I said, man, and we were doing kind of this. I was making a a, uh, a topping for it with some bacon and some craw. I mean, uh, some uh, shrimp and crawfish, and I decided to uh, do a Cajun hash because we kind of had that Cajun uh, profile going. I got to tell you, the folks we had over joining us for dinner were like, this is the best side dish I've ever had. And I'm yeah. like, first time making it. You know, I saw uh, Hussie do a little cowboy stir fry. I said, well, let's just do something with Cajun with some andouille sausage and, and some stuff. And, man, it was absolutely delicious. It's it's crazy. I, I feel like you could just about put any dang thing on there. You're like, oh, right, give me this. Give me that. And then, you know, I got some flack um, on some things. They're like, Hussie, I just don't know about this Italian dressing. And in the in the Worcestershire sauce or I you know whatever I, you know I call it something different, uh, and it was like I think I, I don't think I can do that, hussy. And I'm like, hey, hey, you do you, buddy. But I'm gonna tell you, the crap was good. All right, yeah. it it was freaking awesome. And it's and, and I think people get too wrapped up in things sometimes. It's like, oh, does cowboys use this? I'm like, look, I don't know, but I'm sure they have. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're still cowboys. They don't. Now. If they don't and I let them try it, they'd probably want to. <laughs> I tell you, I mean, it's just, you know, there's haters everywhere. You know how it is. But yeah. It's like, hey, you don't want to use it. Just admit it, you know. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's great. All right. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just great. Stir fries are just so stinking awesome on that thing. And, you know, I mean, what can you go wrong with taters, cabbage, onions, peppers, yep. smoked sausage, ribeye? I mean, maybe an egg on top. Yeah. I mean, if you want to make, yeah, sure. Just throw it on there. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Just toss it all on there. And I think it'll just all be all right. You know, I just, I just, I just don't think you can do anything bad on them personally. Yeah. And you know, uh, I will say my, my favorite meal to still cook on them. I, I love, you know, cooking everything on them, but breakfast is still my favorite. And there's something about, especially this time of year, getting up early, having a cup of coffee out back, getting the griddle going, knowing that yeah. the, the wife and kids may be waking up and you're going to, you're going to have breakfast pretty quick to your point earlier. Um, and then the versatility of breakfast on there, whether you just want a classic with some hash browns and eggs and yeah. Baking sausage, a little pancake, or you want to do a, a breakfast burrito, or maybe some breakfast quesadillas, or something like that. Yeah. So, love breakfast. I tell you what, man, I I made a quesadilla the other day that was just, I mean, it'll make you do some sketchy stuff for another one. I'll tell you <laughs> that. It was, I think it was for my channel, but it was a uh, it was a steak, steak and egg quesadilla, and that thing was just it slapped hard. Uh, really. Yeah, I, I I did it a little unconventional, and I didn't use scrambled eggs. I used like over medium eggs, and uh, yeah, it was it it was top it was top top tier stuff. Uh, just there was a lot going on. I decided to I, I cooked the quesadilla just kind of unorthodox. I put cheese down first, so I had a cheese skirt tortilla on that. I had already had the 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 ribeye cooked up chopped up flipped the tortilla over cheese stuck to it obviously i put more cheese down (laughs) then then the the steak right and then i had the eggs kind of going over here at another place and uh bro it was a it was a flavor bomb man there was a lot of textures a lot of textures going on you know you had the tortilla you had the cheese the, the fried cheese skirt then you had the melted cheese then you had the ribeye then you had that egg with that 
beautiful egg gravy and it was it was fantastic but yeah like you said that's sky's the limit on 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 breakfast um i just kind of took it up a little bit of notch on that one it was great yeah something you just had me thinking about you know uh a lot of times we like to have friends over i'm a big pizza guy i love to make you know homemade pizzas and we'll have friends over and you know i'll I'll get the doughs and the sauce ready and it's kind of a pizza bar you know everybody can kind of make their own build their own now I'm, i'm sitting here as we're talking about quesadillas going man you can almost do call it like a taco bar or a uh, quesadilla bar where, man, you can get some fun toppings together and just yeah. have everybody on the flat top. Just, hey, let's build some fun quesadillas, slice them up and everybody share. And then you come over and create yours. Let's see what we think. You know, and everybody kind of come up with their, their own, make it a fun time. B-Y-O-Q. Build your own quesadilla. I like want it. it. That's, that yeah. sounds like a great phenomenon right there, Rob. Your own yeah. right there, brother. I like that. I like that. Yeah, man. Um. I do want to ask you or or talk about, you know, you're on YouTube. You've been doing great here, but you recently announced, I saw it, that you're going to uh, start having, uh, I'll just let you talk about what you're doing. Another platform, another kind of uh, hussy show is coming. And what is this? Yeah. uh, Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. So I'm going to go and get into the podcasting scene. I've been on a few podcasts, graciously enough. Pe- people have invited me. Thank you, Rob. And uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking. I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy all the other folks out there just creating content too. But most of all, it's for that that love and and that love for cooking, love for eating. Obviously, look at it. I'm a big old boy. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to kind of branch out and to just get outside of that Hey, I'm shooting a video for, you know, and it's a 10, 15 minute, 20 minute video, but really more get to get to know somebody, get to know who they are, what they do, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's uh, called chewing the, chewing the fat with the hungry hussy and chewing the fat is a, is a, I don't know if you guys have it down in, in, in Texas, it's kind of just a, a term, you know, that said, Hey, let's, let's, let's talk, let's talk, uh, let's talk a little bit, you know, let's chew the fat, son. And, uh, you know, you kind of stick around, you know, to, to me, it kind of gives me that old school, uh, you go get a chair, one of them fold out chairs and you sit there under that shade tree and just kind of chew the fat, you know, just talk yeah. about life, you know? And, um, you know, I like to kind of go back to my, my Southern roots, Southern heritage, you know? And, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Got a few folks on the, on the hook to interview and so yeah that'll be that'll be coming up real soon i'm really really excited too yeah. okay so so talking a little bit more about kind of the vision for the show you just mentioned interview is it going to be mostly interviews is it going to be you know just some fun topics to talk what what, what do you how are you see in the direction or are you still working that out yeah it's, you know the the details are getting worked out ideally uh you know I've, I've i've been gracious enough to to be uh i know a few people in the creator space, you know, I kind of, and everybody does things a little differently. So, so that, that's one. I mean, I even thought about like, uh, my brother, uh, big Mike, a lot of people, uh, love my brother. He's not on the show much. Uh, but, uh, when we're on live, especially on Christmas, uh, we, I live stream every Christmas and because we have a big breakfast, that's what we do for my family. And everybody's always like, Oh yeah, we're going to see big Mike. So, you know, that's been a, a thing I want to get him. I want to interview him, and and that right there kind of builds. You know, it's a little bit different. He don't cook a whole lot, but he uh, he's probably the one person that knows me the most. And you know, so, like our family dynamic growing up, you know, that kind of thing just kind of brings in another layer of 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 me and and that kind of thing, and try to really build build on that. But um, I think anything. Obviously, I want to bring it back to food, right? Yeah. Because I feel like I was talking with my buddy uh, last night. Matter of fact, he's like, we all come together most of the time because of food, you know, a lot of times. And that's that's how you really build relationships. I always feel like if you're on some kind of team, you break bread together. Anytime you break bread together, you you become a lot closer, you know. And so um, so that's just what I want to do. I want to I want to chew the fat with folks and, uh, you know, bridge those relationships. 
I, I, I agree with you 100%. I'll tell you, Hussey, I, I do this as well because of people, uh, getting to meet new people and, and getting to to have people over. You know, my wife will tell you that, uh, you know, wanting to have people come over and hang out on a Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, uh, you know, you can call and just invite them to come over and hang out. But you uh, you dangle the carrot of a little bit of food, you know, some, yeah. some uh, stuff's going to be on a plate that's going to be pretty good. Uh, most people will say, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we'll come over and hang out and eat a eat a little bit of your cook and rob. So, yeah. I, you know, to me, it's all about the people. You know, I a lot of times will, uh, you know, I, I say I'll remember the food that we cooked that night. But more importantly, I'll remember the good time I had with those people that we were hanging out with. And that's the memories I want to have is with the folks that we hang out with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it, 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 but it all revolves around that one piece, the table, you know, Absolutely. And, uh, uh, and then that's whenever the conversations flow, the laughter, uh, you know, that kind of thing, the support, you know, it, it may be, it may not be good stuff, you know, maybe something somebody's, uh, going through some tough times, you know, but, uh, the table is what kind of brings everybody, uh, together. So, so here, here's back to the, to the, the podcast real quick. Uh, you know, I always say I'm food, wine, and whiskey, and kind of my hashtag would be keep exploring. You know, always be have an open mind to food and to what you're trying, and and you know, don't have a, you know, if you get a burger over here this way, it's got to be that way. You know, have an open mind to how people interpret making that dish, that type of food. Is the podcast just so folks know it's not going to be just kind of griddle forward. This is going to be just about food in general, the world of food. It is. It's, uh, you know, some of my friends, they're not, they're not griddle at all. You know, they, they're barbecue. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be food, just food, food, fo food forward. Right. Um, and, and I, I think once I get into it, there's going to be some, uh, some jokes, you know, some yeah. stupid, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it, we're all going to bring it back to food and it's not going to be just griddle. It's not going to be just barbecue. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just about the, the world of food basically. But yeah, I'm, I'm very adventurous. Uh, I like to experiment. Um, uh, I like, I like to do all kinds of different things. Uh, it might even be about hot sauce. You know, we have a hot sauce manufacturer here. Um, little people know Texas Pete isn't even made in texas you know it's right out of winston-salem north carolina which is uh you know 20 minutes up the road which would be pretty cool to have somebody you know like that on you know so sure. uh because i love hot sauce as well i don't know if you do but absolutely um you know it's uh of course you're in texas i don't know that's a stupid question about me not at all there's some people here that don't like heat but i, I yeah but yeah uh you know maybe a restaurant you know maybe i interview somebody who's in a restaurant space you know um it's, it's the sky's the limit. And, and again, it's just about food, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, as we get ready to close out this episode, Hussey, uh, I want to let you talk about where people can find you. I know you have a website and I also want yep. you to mention that you know, you've created some great seasons that would be available on the website and then just talk about social media. Where can people find you if they want to follow you and see what you're doing? Yep. Uh, so, you know, all my socials, your TikToks, your Instagrams, Facebook, uh, the hungry hussy, uh, you can find me. I have a website, the hungry uh, where I have a lot of, uh, and everything ties back. Right. So i got my recipes, written recipes on my, on my website. Uh, on my website, you can also find some of my seasonings. I have right now two seasonings. Uh, these are my own custom seasonings. They're not a co-pack uh, or they're not, they're not a uh, brand or what do you call oh, this brain fart? Uh, it's not somebody else's seasonings and I just put a label on it. These are my custom blend seasonings. Um, one is, it's kind of the, the big runner It's called uh, heifer dust. And I ri originally formulated that for, for like smash burgers, steaks, you know, that kind of thing. But come to find out people like that. They use it like, like a season all basically. Um, so you got baked potatoes, salads, people are just like putting it on their popcorn. I'm getting all kinds of things and, and it's been really a good running item. People really love it. And then I have a, it's called Fiesta dust. So one's heifer dust, one's Fiesta dust. The Fiesta dust is more of like a, <clears throat> like a Mexican, you know, flair. It's got your cumins, your coriander. It's got a little warmth to it. Not no hot. There's no cayenne. There is some 
there are some hotter, a little warmer chilies in there, but uh, but nothing hot. We don't do a lot of real big hot here. Um, and so that's available as well. I have some uh, meat temperature magnets. Uh, so you can have this reference right on your griddle or your smoker. It tells you the temps, what you need to pull off of uh, temperature wise. And then also a griddle temperature magnet that's been very popular so it kind of tells you about where your knobs need to be for eggs, for example, uh, and the and the the temperature at which your griddle needs to be at. So if you got an infrared thermometer, you can measure that, and and that'll be your range for eggs, right? Um, so I have that. Got some merch as well, hats, t-shirts, you name it. So that's all on my website, and then um, you know YouTube is 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 pretty much my biggest platform right now uh, for videos and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, if you haven't went and watched your videos, you know, those listening, definitely worth the, the view. I mean, he does a great job if you're looking to learn to cook on a flat top or if you're just looking for some great ideas uh, of what you can cook on the flat top. And by the way, you'll be entertained as you learn and watch. Uh, great channel to go check out. I've been enjoying you for a while and uh, I'll continue to do so, Matt. You do a great job. I appreciate it, Rob. I'm glad we can finally uh, sync up and, and get this interview. <laughs> it's been a it's been a struggle, I know. But no, I not at all. I appreciate you taking the time and coming on. And, and with that, we're going to wrap up the episode, Matt. So much uh, thanks for coming on. I really enjoyed the conversation. I know the folks listening did as well. I um, want to say thank you to everybody for listening to this episode. And until our next episode, enjoy your next pour. <laughs>